What Crossings does for people who are not preachers is that it allows them to hear a good sermon, even if one might not be preached. All of my imperfections, being smart for generosity. It's become such a way of life for me. Crossings is not a sect of Christianity. Crossings is a tool that we use to understand Christianity. A way of understanding life. It's a lens. It really is good, and it is something new. So Crossings is kind of a bummer, right? It's, it sounds negative. It sounds like bad news. What's distinctive about Crossings as opposed to other approaches to reading scripture, reading our own lives, um, reading God's intent for us, is uh, recognizing um, that there is no good news um, without bad news. Without recognizing what the problem is, um, we don't recognize the value of the solution. So God has a, uh, one of the things that we like to say, or um, one of my uh, seminary professors, Bob Bertram, one of the founders of Crossings, uh, was fond of saying was that we need a God-sized solution to a God-sized problem. Well, you could put it the other way around. We need a God-sized problem for this God-sized solution. It seems like a bummer. It seems like a downer. To sit to, it seems like navel-gazing to focus on how bad we are. That's not the intent. But it is to be real about uh, the depth of sin and that it's not just about our behavior, or it's about our attitude and it's about um, a system that we're trapped in that we cannot, we cannot possibly free ourselves from. It really is that bad. We're without hope, without uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, and that's what, we wanna, that's what we wanna get to. We wanna lay that wound open yeah, so that it can be cleaned out and uh, given the remedy. Why is crossing so important? I think it's because I don't see other people doing it. If, you know, I'd be, I think I'd be really happy if somebody else was doing this because then I wouldn't have to worry about it and I could spend my free time woodworking or something. But I don't see other people doing, fo focusing on this and I think it's so important that it has to be done um, because in order to, to to preach the gospel, to preach the really good news, we have to do this work of going all the way down to um, the depths of, of our God-sized problem, to recognize that our problem really is God-sized. It's not something that we can solve ourselves. It's something that God has to solve. So Christians have traditionally called this problem sin. And sin for me um, really focuses on um, selfishness. It's a self-centeredness that um, it's not bad just because it focuses on me, but it's bad because it then doesn't focus on other people around me and the world. Luther was deeply flawed. He was a deeply flawed man um, who contradicted his own message at the end of his life. But I think what he said in his deathbed uh, rings as true as anything else, that we are beggars, it is true. He said he recognized his own sin and his own failure to live up to, um, uh, to the, uh, the message that he preached. Um, we are in captivity to sin and we cannot free ourselves. Um, and we, so to take that, that statement, that claim seriously, is, is I think uh, that would be one way of saying what is, what is the distinctive thing about crossings? We really take that seriously. We go that deep. So that then we've got nothing. We don't have just a problem with ourselves and we don't just have a problem with our neighbors or the world as it is. We have a problem with God and God has a problem with us. And that's the, I think that's the thing that we find that a lot of people don't like to say because God is love and God is kind and God would never say anything bad about you like that. And that's when the gospel comes in. We say we've changed the subject. You, there's nothing for me to do, so somebody else has got to do it. And that is God in Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary.